just going to speak for a few minutes uh, this morning. And you know what I'm going to speak on, Colleen? The fire from heaven. <laughs> I think God's trying to say something to us this morning. God's trying to speak to us this morning. You can stand or sit for a minute as whatever you want to do. But let's keep in this presence of God. Let's keep saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The Lord has been speaking to us this morning. He's been telling us he loves us. He's been telling us about his fire and his purity. He's been telling us um, that he wants us in one accord, in one place. And we want to thank God for that this morning. We want to thank God for his love for us. Amen. So we all need a supernatural touch from God. You know, we all need to be connected with the divine, with the presence of God. You know, the disciples, they were desperate after Jesus had, they'd had Jesus with them, but now he had died and then he had risen again. And then they'd had these incredible appearances of him and they were thrilled by that, but they were still afraid of their circumstances. What was going to happen now? Jesus uh, had now ascended to heaven after that. What was going to happen? He said, my Holy Spirit, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to be with you. We all need that supernatural touch from God. So on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, they were in one place, in one accord. They had agreed together, we want to touch and see God. Why? Why were they there? Why were they together? Because Jesus had told them, stay in the city of Jerusalem until you're clothed with power from on high. And so they were obedient to his voice. They were obedient to what he said. Luke, Luca, God wants you to step out in that tongues a lot more so we can interpret that. God's anointed you with that. So be, please be stepping out in the gift of tongues there because it's going to be speaking to us as a church. Cara, God's given you an authority in your life. And you sometimes say to yourself, why do I speak with such authority? And God says, just listen very closely to me because it's to be applied in certain places at certain times. And when you speak into certain situations, as God's going to show you more of those in the days to come. It's going to release such glory and such presence of God into situations where people are going to come back and say, the whole situation has changed. The whole thing has been transformed since you spoke to me, since you spoke that into my life. And God says, like, like the, prophet, the prophet Elijah, you're going to speak and things are going to transform. Things are going to transform in the nation. Like the prophets, are, like the fire came down from heaven when it seemed like it couldn't, when everything was um, against, when the, when the whole world was against. Yet you stand in a place where you say, I'm going to be a prophet to the nation. Uh, when everyone else is speaking one way, I'll speak another way. I'll speak what God says. And as you do, the fire will come down and it will consume all the things that are wrong and it will be a sign to people and people's minds will change some of the people you're speaking to their minds will completely change they were prophets of Baal or they were believing the prophets of Baal suddenly they will believe the prophets of God of Yahweh because of your word but sometimes you will feel is it working is anything happening am I alone and God just wants to say to you you're not alone at all you're not alone at all. You're in a company of 7,000 prophets. You're in a company of the, the body of Christ. Now, all those that haven't bowed the knee to Baal, and I know many have bowed the knee to Baal, but all those that haven't bowed the knee to Baal, and God wants you to know, you know, you're with those that haven't bowed the knee. You're with the body of Christ. You're with the family of God, with those that truly honor God. So I just sensed that this morning. God wanted you to know that he's given you that authority for a reason. But keep being in his presence so it's not a blunt instrument, but it's a sharp sword. And, oh, and when you have a sharp sword, I was holding a sharp, I was, well, it wasn't necessarily a sharp sword, but I was holding a sword the other day, the men will remember. Um, and uh, it's, it's a real responsibility. And so keep bringing that into the presence of God because it's going to be shot and it's going to actually bring transformation and change around you. And when those times when you feel depressed or you feel alone, just remember God says, no, there's thousands with you. There's thousands with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They were in one place with one accord. They were in agreement together at, because Jesus had told them to. One place. What did they do? The disciples, the men and the women, they built relationship. God wants us to build relationship together, to be that body of Christ at this time so that we know that we're not alone. So we know that we're a prophet to the nations because we build as the body of Christ together. Kingdom family. Kingdom family that forgives each other that speaks the truth to each other, but loves each other and forgives each other. 
that connects together, that supports each other, that um, is that family that stands as the king's family when everything else seems to stand against that when we go out into the world. But in our music, in our voices, in everything that we do, we stand as the king's family in one accord, in one place and in one accord. It says they devoted themselves to prayer in that one place. And as we come together in fellowship horizontally, God wants us to come vertically as well because that's where the fire comes down. That's where the Lord commands the blessing, life forevermore. Keep being faithful. Keep being faithful. God sees your heart. God knows. Keep being faithful. He's working everything out for his good. In Jesus' name, Casey. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As we come with one place in one accord, the fire from heaven comes down and we burn bright. We begin to burn bright. So when the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, 1, had fully come, they were all together with one accord in one place. You see, we have to be obedient. We have to be in one accord in one place. Otherwise, we miss the fire. (laughs) In one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, as we saw with the children's talk today. And they were what? All filled with the Holy Spirit. Something supernatural happened. They were all filled with God. Wow, Jesus is here. He may not be here bodily, but he's filled us with himself. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues, Luca, as the Spirit gave them utterance. No longer my will, but your will be done. Let your fire come and do your work inside of me so that I will be who you want me to be, that I'll think your way, I'll speak your way, I'll see your way in Jesus' name. Let your will be done and your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I see you, the handmaid of the Lord, Olivia. Keep seeking and serving me. What did that fire do? Number one, it was fire for identity. Fire for identity. Tongues of fire distributed on each one. Each of us. Each one of you is unique. God knows you. You're unique. It's your unique call. It's your unique calling, Faisal. God knows you and he loves you. It's your unique calling. Each one of us, unique work, identity. He rested on you personally because he knew you. You're my son. You're my daughter. I love you. Yes, I know the difficulties you've been through, but I love you. Keep stretching out your hands to me, and I will feel you, and I will work with you. I'll keep confirming you're my son. You're my daughter, as we heard today. I love you. God so loved the world that he gave his own son. He loves you today. God knows, Anne, but he loves you. (laughs) Amen. God loves you today. God loves you through the difficulty. He knows. He's glad. He's glad of your faithfulness, John. He's glad. Praise God. Fire for identity. Never let the devil tell you who you are. But let the fire of God and the presence of God tell you you have your unique fire that has distributed and landed on you. You're here for a purpose. Secondly, fire for cleansing. Fire for cleansing. You know, God woke me up yesterday morning and gave me these five words about fire. And I didn't know I was preaching today until Kara told me in the afternoon. (laughs) Thank you, (laughs) Kara. No, Christian Christian wasn't able to preach today for various reasons he'll tell you about. (laughs) So I said, okay, thank you, Kara. I think God just gave me the download this morning. (laughs) Fire for clear. And then Colleen comes and prophesies. It's about fire today, yeah? Fire for cleansing. Without holiness, no one will see God. Look, we might get saved, but no one will see God. He doesn't just want holiness in your spirit. He wants holiness in your soul. It cleanses out the things of the soul. So you can see God. Where are you, God? Where are you, God? I thought you were my son. I was your son. I was your daughter. Yes, you are. But you've got some things in the way, in your soul. Without holiness, no one will see God. 
God cleansing the soul. God's been cleansing us over the last few weeks, hasn't he? With things like blessing generations and things like that. I was with somebody yesterday who I hadn't seen for a long time. They told me they've been going through all kinds of addictions, all kinds of things. Last week, they were fed up with it. They got on their knees and they cried out to God, help me! And he delivered them. And he delivered them. And suddenly they weren't doing what they've been doing every single day. They weren't doing it anymore. And they were free. And there was a peace in their heart. They said, I want to come and see you, Pastor Alex. I want to understand this a bit better, Pastor Alex. And so God will deliver us. His fire can cleanse us and change, change us. You know, Jesus wants us to build with gold, silver, and precious stones on the foundation of Jesus in our lives so that actually things will last, that when they go through the fire, the wood, hay, and stubble, the things we've tried to do in our own strength, yes, they'll be burnt up. And sometimes that's painful, isn't it? I just built something very nice there, Jesus. Why did you burn that up? <laughs> Why did you do that? I was quite proud of that. He says, yes, I know. <laughs> but what comes through is gold, silver, precious stones, the very jewels of heaven that he's placed in your life. That's what comes through. And so we say, not my will, but yours be done. And so that on the day when he comes with his final fire, not the great white throne, but the judgment seat of Christ, only what he built in us will remain. So let's not just get in as by fire with just our spirit. You understand what I'm saying? But let's get in as by fire and we go through that fire, but the gold, silver and precious stones is there of the obediences, of the things that he was doing in our lives that last forever, amen? And so the fire is there, but of cleansing. And so we see the fruit of the spirit coming out of our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such, there's no law, there's no nothing, because his presence is there with us. So fire for identity, fire for cleansing, fire for power. Acts 1.8 says, and you shall receive power. That's dunamos, like dynamite, a positive dynamite, blowing out the old, bringing in the new when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He says, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. As you pray in the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up in your most holy faith. Your faith becomes stronger. You come closer to God, keeping yourself in the love of God. Suddenly you react and respond differently because the love of God has been kept in you and you've been kept in the love of God because you kept that intimacy with God. And so he, that fire of power, that power is there. And he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, if anyone speaks in an unknown tongue, he speaks not to men but to God because he speaks mysteries in the heaven. And no one understands him because he's speaking to God. And those mysteries, he says, build up your spirit. And so let yourself be built up. Pray in the spirit. And let the Holy Spirit build you up on a daily basis. Paul says, I, I want you all to speak in tongues. I want you all to speak in tongues and build yourselves up in your most holy faith. And then fire for power. And sometimes we need that ability, don't we? We need to know he's with us in the tough times. And fourthly, fire for ministry. Fire for ministry, prophesying. Those gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. Those gifts of miracles. Healing. Those gifts of faith. Those gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's now a tongue to the body that's then interpreted. Yeah? Those gifts of word of knowledge. What's going on in your life and he wants to set you free. Word of wisdom, what direction does he want you to take? And discerning of spirits, where's that coming from? I can distinguish the difference between God's spirit and angels and the demonic spirits and the enemy's lies. And so, fire for ministry. So that's fire for identity, I know who I am. Fire for cleansing, do your work in me, God. Fire for power to build you up. Fire for ministry. 
to serve and give to others by his spirit. He loves you so much, Gina. He loves you so much, Gina. He knows he's with you. And then fifthly and finally, fire to be a witness. Because when God's cleansed us out, when God's done his work, he says, you will see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witnesses. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. And as the Holy Spirit went out there, you know, the people around, the disciples spoke the language of the people. That affirmed the people that God loves you. God can talk to you in your own language. You know, some of you will speak to people in their, in their language, whether that's Italian, whether that's youth language, whether that's rap language, whether that's the language of dance, whether that's the language of poetry or high literature, English, through books, through science, through psychology, through manual labor, you will speak the language of the people God has sent you to. And they'll hear you in their own language speaking about the wonderful works of God. And they will also know that God accepts people in their diversity because he loves them. And they will know that they can belong because that crowd, 3,000, came and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching to fellowship to breaking of bread and prayer they broke bread they ate together they became the body of Christ and God kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved Father we want to thank you today for your fire from heaven Father we ask you for fresh fire this morning come Holy Spirit we're here in one place today in one accord let's ask God for fresh fire God knows your situation today he knows where you're at. Let's come and ask him for a fresh fire. You might want to come out of your seats. You might want to lie on the floor. You might want to stand. You might want to kneel. But let's just come before God. Lord, we come this morning, Father. Whether we're here in the building, whether we're at home, we're in one place today. Father, as a family of God, in one accord, in agreement, wanting to burn bright for you through your Holy Spirit's fire. Come, Holy Spirit. Let's just ask him. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, fresh fire from the Holy Spirit. Thank you that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to manifest fresh fire this morning, God. Fresh fire this morning. Hallelujah. Come cleanse us. Come show us our identity, who you've made us to be today. Come empower us, Lord, by your Spirit. Come prepare us as you've been speaking to some of us for ministry today. Come, Holy Spirit. Not my will, 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 not my will. No, 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 not my will, not my will. Sometimes we've got to fight against that, haven't we? Not my will. Not my will, 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 not my will in Jesus' name, but yours be done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want more of you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And God sees the faithfulness of your heart. God sees the faithfulness of your heart, Anne. Thank you, Lord.